We've got lots to get through. Uh, I want to talk to you about the war in Ukraine first. Yes. And I wanted to play you something. So on this programme last night on the news desk, we spoke to the family of Aidan Aslin, the British soldier, being held hostage, if you like, by Russia. Yeah. His brother Nathan had a message for you. Act now while well, you've got the time to do to, to act. Um, you've got a British citizen, you've got two British citizens on the line. And it's a, a moral obligation to do something about it. So they and Aidan want you to help organise a prisoner swap. Aidan rang his mother on uh, the weekend to say, please ask the Prime Minister this, get a message to him. They want you to get him out in exchange for a close ally, Vladimir Putin, someone called Viktor Medvedchek. Can you help? We will do what we can to, to help. And I, I think that everybody will, uh, will sympathise with Aidan, with, with his family. Uh, it's very important for, to understand that the, the, the Aidan and other... UK nationals who've been fighting for the uh, Ukrainian um, armed forces who get uh, captured are not uh, hostages. They're not there to be swapped, uh, you know, as though they were uh, terrorists or whatever. They are prisoners of war and uh, they are therefore entitled to rights under the Geneva Convention. Uh, they should not, uh, under the laws of war, as you, as you know, Tom, they should not be paraded uh, in front of the cameras. They should not be made uh, to give uh, hostage videos. That is a breach of their of their rights as as prisoners of war. A breach of their rights. Yeah. Under the, what under chance of this prisoner swap? Because that's what they've asked. Uh, we, we, we will we will do uh, what we can. Clearly, uh, it is for the Ukrainians uh, mm. that they they have uh, the other individual who's uh, part of the <laughs> equation. Uh, we we can't really preempt what they may decide uh, to do. But we are we are working very closely on it. Okay. Uh, what I what I think is unacceptable is for the is for the Russians to to treat Aidan and, uh, uh, and uh, another UK uh, soldier, UK national, as, um, you know, as though they were, they were terrorists. They are not. They are prisoners of war. The other thing that Aidan's mother is absolutely furious about is with Facebook for refusing to take down that video. Now, YouTube took it down when she asked Facebook have refused to. Do you share her anger with Facebook? I, and, I do. And what can you do well, about I, it? I do, and I can tell you that uh, Nadine Dorries rang Facebook earlier on uh, today rang, uh, rang Nick Clegg, uh, who, who you, know, you and I both know well, and as I understand the matter, Nick has agreed to, uh, to take that down. Well, that's very interesting. Let me ask you, though, about this very significant escalation in words uh, between Britain and Russia, really, over the last 24 hours or so. Sergei Lavrov, someone who you've met in the past, said that, let me just read this to you, NATO, in essence, is engaged in a war with Russia through a proxy by arming them, and war means war. He also said the risk of a nuclear war are very significant. Your response to Sergei Lavrov, are we now at war with Russia? No, and it's very, very important, Tom, that we don't uh, get, uh, we don't accept the way that the Russians are, are trying to frame what's going on in Ukraine. This is not, they want to present this as a, as a confrontation between uh, Russia and the West or Russia and, and NATO. That is emphatically not what is going on. What is going on is that on uh, the 24th of February, Russia decided uh, to launch an act of completely unprovoked, unjustifiable aggression against a sovereign, uh, independent country. And what the West is doing and what countries have individually decided to do is help the Ukrainians to defend themselves. We cannot accept this, the idea that this is some sort of standoff uh, between Russia and the West. This is, this is the Russians. I'm afraid it's Vladimir Putin's regime. I don't, uh, as you know, I have a lot of sympathy uh, with individual uh, Russians, with, with, with Russia as a, a country. It's a fantastic country. But Putin's regime is engaged in a diabolical attempt uh, to crush, uh, crush the life yeah. out of the out of the Ukrainian so state. So your armed and that, forces and that, minister and that today, is what the, uh, and and so it is. What, what we're doing is uh, helping the Ukrainians to protect themselves in that conflict. That I understand. Your armed forces minister today, though, said he is quite happy with the prospect of our armaments, our missiles, our artillery <clears> being used by the Ukrainians to target places in Russia. Oil depots, for example, which we've seen burning the last couple of days. Are you happy with that too? Look, we don't want the, uh, the crisis to escalate beyond Ukraine's borders, but the Ukrainians, plainly, as, as James has said, uh, James Heapy, our, our armed forces minister, uh, uh, they have a right to defend themselves. They're being attacked uh, from uh, within Russian territory. Uh, from within the, the, the borders of Russia, they have a right to, to protect and, and, and defend themselves. And <clears throat> if you look at it, Tom, what's, what's happening now 
is that, you know, Putin decided uh, to, to launch this invasion. His pretext was uh, that he wanted to rule out any possibility of uh, Ukrainian membership of NATO, remember? Well, everybody who knows the subject, uh, as you do well, knows that, you know, Ukraine was never going to join uh, NATO anytime soon. That was obvious. Uh, NATO was not going to accept uh, Ukraine anytime soon. But the world has changed completely since then. Yeah. Totally and completely. And you've now got a situation today in which uh, not only uh, Sweden but Finland are both thinking uh, actively about joining NATO. Quite extraordinary uh, turn of events. And in Ukraine, you know, where is this going to go? Let's, let's be clear. The, the, we're going to build on the reality that's already uh, forming on the ground. You're going to see... Uh, Western countries or uh, sympathetic countries, they won't all be Western countries, but sympathetic countries, giving the Ukrainians uh, the assurances, the, uh, the commitment right. that go with... Uh, You're saying no backing that, down. ...that go with um, uh, more, more, more NATO-grade weapons, uh, more training and, and sharing of, of intelligence. You're, you're not backing down. Let me put to you this, though, uh, on that nuclear threat, which is what Sergei Lavrov has put on the table again today. Defence analysts are becoming ever more worried that the more defeats Vladimir Putin suffers, the more <clears throat> likely he is resort to the use of tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Is that a worry <coughs> to share? I think it is very, very important that we... Uh, just to repeat my point, we must not get dragged into this. But don't this, repeat your point. Do you this, share this, that worry? I, I think... Uh, no, I don't. But what I think is that uh, you, you talk about the defeats that... Uh, that, that Putin may, uh, may sustain. Let me make, make one point to, that I think people should... Uh, I think is politically and strategically very important. The, um, the incredible thing about the continuing conflict is that the, uh, uh, the Russian public overwhelmingly are back Putin. And, and you'll, you'll have seen the polls. You'll have seen the, you'll have seen the, the, the statistics. Therefore... Uh, he has the political margin, uh, far more political margin for manoeuvre uh, within Russia than uh, that argument would necessarily allow for. So when you say, you know, how many more reverses can, uh, can he accept, I would say that given the massive Russian backing uh, for what he is doing, uh, given the, the apparent obliviousness of the uh, Russian media, about what is really happening in Ukraine, the, the paradox is uh, that Putin has far more political space to back down, uh, to uh, withdraw. And it, it, there could come a point uh, when he could, he could say to the, to the Russian people, the military technical op operation that uh, we launched in, uh, in Ukraine has been accomplished, it's been uh, technically a success, but perhaps more than mm. military a success or whatever, you, know, you can put it one way or the other. Uh, we had to go in to, uh, to accomplish certain objectives, to uh, protect the rights of certain people, that's been done. Uh, and I think he has far more political space than... Uh, I would suggest. People, okay. Well, the people, people worry about. Uh, people uh, say, uh, well, we have to make... Let me, let me just clarify this. People no, say, I want to move people on say we have to make a concession... Uh, to, to we have to worry about what Putin might do because of the risk yeah. of his defeat. I think he's got a lot of space. He's got a lot of room for manoeuvre. I understand. Let's move on to the cost of living crisis, which is something yes. that is really concerning for a lot of people today. Now, the Chancellor has taken some action to help on energy bills and petrol prices. That much we do know. Uh, you did ask your cabinet this morning, though, and I want to quote this back to you, to double down on innovative ways to ease pressures on household finances. Prime Minister, people are suffering now. Why are you casting around for ideas? Why aren't you implementing Well, we are. Sorry. Uh, look at no, the, you're casting around for new ideas. Is, has anyone got any ideas to solve this? No, it's not that. that, that, that so we said to the Cabinet this morning. I'm great respect, uh, Tom, though. You're a very, very distinguished uh, uh, broadcaster. You weren't in Cabinet this morning. That's what uh, so your press you, release said. You weren't in Cabinet this morning, so uh, you, you, know, you, you didn't hear what I said. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing is making sure that we do everything in our, in our power uh, to help uh, people... Uh, with the with the, the pressures on their family budgets, so uh, where where the number one pressure at the moment is the uh, the spike in energy prices. It's a global phenomenon. It's been it's been driven by uh, all sorts of problems to do with global uh, supply chains. Been driven uh, partly uh, exacerbated, made worse by what's happening in Ukraine. You can see the the the, the huge increase in the price of of oil. And that's, that's, that's hitting everybody. It's hitting families up and down the country. So we're helping people 
uh, by cutting council tax, uh, by making sure that we uh, support people who are facing particular hardship, putting more money into into local councils to, to give them the funds that they need to help people. Can through. I ask you about some new but, things that but, you're doing? But, but, I understand but, but, childcare. But, you want to help on childcare and yeah. you want to... I understand you want to uh, do that by easing some health and safety rules to make childcare, therefore, cheaper. Is that but, your thinking? The, the, the truth is that we have a lot of uh, tax-free childcare already uh, provided for, but not enough people take it up. And we but want to, you want to, we want to make rules? sure... Do you want to make the health and safety? We'll, we'll, look at, we'll, look at, uh, we'll look at all sorts we'll of things. Look at that. We will look at I promise you we'll look at all sorts of things to help. You don't want to people. go there. No, no, I didn't say that. But I want people to realise that a lot of people have the p potential uh, to get tax free childcare uh, and they're not taking it up. We want to advertise it, we want to make sure uh, more people do it. Give you give you another example of something that we're we're doing where I, I just uh, I just saw the figures today mm. and we want to see more take up. Tutoring, helping helping kids at, at school. It's a fantastic thing. We've delivered m millions and millions of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of tutoring opportunities, or we want to deliver millions uh, in, in the course of the, uh, the next few years. But uh, at the moment, only 60% of schools have actually taken up the, the tutoring offer. And it's great, but parents who, whose kids get tutored really value it. And so when we have great projects, Take like, like tax-free childcare, uh, like free tutoring, I want people to Let me know about ask it you about up. something else quite specific. Uh, another big worry for people is how they're going on holiday this summer with this huge yes. backlog in yeah. passports. Uh, they can't renew them because the Home Office uh, appear to be going quite slow in that. Is it right that you blamed that slowdown in Cabinet on, and I quote you, tell me if I'm right or not, because I wasn't in Cabinet, you're right about that, you blamed it on post-Covid work-from-home manana culture. Did you say that? I, I might have. I did use those words, Tom. Did. I did. I didn't. I, I didn't necessarily use them about uh, about any particular institution. But I do think. Who are you talking about? I, I think that we have a general issue in uh, some of our uh, some of our approach to public services, and uh, you know, and perhaps more widely that we all got used to to working from home, to to, to Zoom calls, to thinking that we could do business like that. And I, I think for many people, it is great. Uh, for, I'm not, I don't want to um, minimise the value of this. I think for, for lots of people, particularly for women uh, who, who, you know, who have kids and, and so on, and, and parents who have kids, and I don't mm. want to be stereotypical about it. Anybody who wants to stay at home for one reason or, or another, you can see the, the advantages of, of working from home. But I have to ask myself, when, I, when, when I'm, the, you know, I'm the custodian of the public purse, uh, and I'm looking at, uh, at how much we're taking and how much we're spending, I have to ask myself uh, whether actually it is as productive as all that. I so when I that. see When I see institutions uh, not delivering things like passports in a speedy, uh, or, or, or driving licences, uh, in a speedy uh, way that, uh, you know, and these things are quite expensive, it's did, 150 quid to get a new passport. Yeah. Uh, we, want, we want action. Did you also say during Cabinet, or anywhere else, uh, or that any... you are tempted to privatise the arse off the passport office if they don't get a move on? Are you thinking <coughs> quite seriously about privatising the passport? I, I think look, a lot of people might think that's a good idea. I think, with it. I think it's... Uh, look, I don't want to... to uh, well, I don't care whether an institution is in the private or public sector, I just want it to deliver value. So you might. And, and I, I want it to, to deliver value and a good service. And... I think that we all, as public servants, I as the as the as the the, the leader of the the whole of the public service in this country, have to recognise that you know we've been through a very difficult time. We 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 supported uh, businesses with huge sums of taxpayers' money, uh, five you know four hundred eight uh, billion pounds, but we're now facing tougher economic times. And uh, people are okay. feeling privatisation feeling the pitch. is a possibility. And so we we'll get to that point. Privatisation. I'm not going to rule, Tom. I'm not on your You're show, on your out. August show, going to rule anything out. What I'm saying okay. is, and I don't want it. I don't mind whether it's in the, the public or the private sector. What I want is it to deliver value for money and help keep people's costs down. I it's, want. I want if to. If you want to get a new passport, if you want to go on holiday with your family, you know, it can cost hundreds of pounds to get new passports. You deserve to have a cheaper, faster service. I want to ask you finally, uh, finally about Partygate. Uh, we are going to have to go there, I'm afraid, Prime Minister. Yes. And I want to ask you directly, because your office have confirmed when you have received a fixed penalty notice. Have you received one in this latest batch for the Bring Your Own Booze Party <coughs> in that back garden of yours on May the 20th? I can tell you, Tom, that uh, had I, you would be uh, the very first to know, but uh, I, what I've also said 
is... So, so, so that's a no? You haven't received a fixed personality? Uh, you, you're going to hear you're going to hear about new uh, FPNs, of course you are, but... For you? Yeah, yes, of course. And I've, so I've, you I've, think I've... you'll get more? No, I've said that I'll, I will let people know. Yeah, but, but I'm I've, asking you that. Will you get what, more ones? What I've also, what I've also said uh, is that I won't give a running commentary, and for right. me to you'd confirm to, one if you had one. Uh, yeah, uh, but okay. I won't give a I won't give a running commentary on it. And I, but I, that does not mean that I won't uh, return to the. Of course, I will re return to uh, the subject uh, when the when the okay. when the I, investigation I is want complete. To, I just want to put this to you because. Um, you're not going to have a running commentary. I'm afraid there is going to be a running commentary on this because people want to know and you understand that public uh, uh, interest in all that. This is going to go on for months and months and months potentially, isn't it? You're going to get questions like this and interviews like this uh, all the time. Does it frustrate you? Look, I, I, I think that increasingly uh, people can see uh, that, you know, this is something that uh, is being dealt with and what they want us is to focus on uh, the other stuff and particularly the big stuff that really matters to them and the stuff that, you know, you've, we, we've been talking about just now, so uh, I think that what they what they see is that uh, uh, this is a, a government that went through uh, a very you know tumultuous time for the country, uh, got Brexit done, delivered the vaccine, fastest vaccine rollout, first country to European country to help arm the Ukrainians. Uh, we we get big decisions right, and we do them uh, we do them fast. You... We, we're now in a, we're now in a situation to get back to your point about. The pressures on on family. No, families. we did. We, we talked. I do. But that is. No, that, but you, that. But that you is. You told me all about it, Prime Minister. I had to ask you something well, else. No, that you is have. where we need to go. Are you expecting a vote of no confidence from your MPs after May the fifth? Those think, local elections, I, because some of them are out to get you. You know that. I think that that you see that qualifies, in my view, as MPs, and I'm happy for other politicians, opposition politicians, if they choose right. to talk about that kind of thing. Fine. Be my guest. I mean, I'm your guest, but be you know, be to go right ahead. Right. Uh, I want to talk about the stuff that I think is of uh, preeminent importance, right. uh, making getting us through the aftershocks of COVID. This is country has got an amazing future. I get it. Uh, I'm going to ask you a final question. We're having huge sums of investment coming you've, into the country. You've talked about that. I'm going to ask you a final question. I haven't actually talked about the investment coming into the country. Many, many other times, to me and other broadcasts. Let me ask you a final question. Some MPs are very angry with you. You were obviously quite angry with some MPs. And I want to just put this particular point to you because I do think it shows the strength of your frustration. Is it true that you call one of these rebellious Tory MPs who doesn't want you to be Prime Minister anymore, Tobias Elmwood, that C word, Elwood? Uh, look, uh, uh, I, I think... No, but I think let me really? just let me let me just let me just remind you uh, of my of my golden rule, which is that I think uh, as uh, a politician, certainly as as prime minister, uh, you, you're better off uh, talking about the things that people want you to do, that people want you to fix, uh, the, the the big plans we have uh, for the country. Uh, you're better off doing that than talking about. Um, uh, other politicians or ourselves. Politicians love talking about themselves. My experience is that, on the whole, what the voters want is for us to talk about uh, our electorate and what we're Prime doing Mr. to serve them and what we're doing to take the country forward. That is what okay. I'm going to do. Which you and I have discussed. Uh, I'm great for time. I have to I'm, let you go. You have, you have to shut me up. Um,